Have you ever wondered how it feels to have a conversation with the most powerful Israeli businesswoman in the UAE? Well, today at Arabian Business, we have the incredible opportunity to sit down with Aya Zarman, a true trabalizer and owner of two massive oil companies, one of them being Global Oil and Gas LTD. With a global empire worth nine figures, her influence spans far and wide, making her an intimidating force in the business world. Aya, thank you so much for coming over today and having this beautiful conversation with us at Arabian Business. How are you doing? Very good. Thank you so much for having me here. Now, your your achievements as a powerful businesswoman in the oil and gas industry, as well as numerous other sectors, if I'm not mistaken, are truly remarkable. So I just wanted to ask you, you're the most influential Israeli woman in the UAE. How did that happen? Take us back. Starting back from, I think, maybe 16 years ago, um, when I was traveling, uh, I'm traveling a lot all over the world because I, don't I have doubt. no boundaries. <laughs> 16 years ago, I met uh, somebody from uh, the UAE, from Dubai, businessman, and we started to talk business uh, together. At the time, I didn't know anything about Dubai, UAE, mm. you know, and uh, suddenly I found out that uh, we have lots of mutual interest and it has nothing to do with being in Dubai or Israel mm -hmm. or Cyprus or or Italy or whenever. Mm -hmm. And we started a business like that and then he opened me the world. And I found out that uh, we can really have a win-win situation mm -hmm. while collaborating with, with the UAE and Israel. Mm -hmm. And that was 16 years ago before even the modernization yeah. started. That's an interesting story. Now, could you just tell us maybe some insights of what really motivated you to, to enter the sector then? Um, I'll tell you um, there are a few things. One is like I am. Um, I like risk. I like to take risks. I believe that every business that you do is never 100% success. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, all the people in the world will be very rich. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to take risk. Mm -hmm. And I am. Um, I, I like the challenge of having some risk. This is one thing. Secondly, mm -hmm. it's a sector that has lots of. Uh, advantages and, and rewards mm -hmm. and money wise and I was and I wanted to be the most uh, <laughs> potential is definitely <laughs> there yes yeah so that has a lot of money in the side and, and this is a very challenging sector all my life I've been with men not with I can imagine I studied mathematics physics and even as a pianist as a soloist pianist mm -hmm. so I never had a uh, uh, in, you know, interaction with the uh, women industry mm -hmm. or women uh, uh, area. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was a, again another challenging uh, uh, right. sector to be there. So I, I like it because of uh, all these kind of all, all these reasons I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can imagine. And I mean, you did mention the piano now from your early days as a piano protege to becoming one of the most successful, you know, female entrepreneurs and executives in the Middle East. What are some, let's say, significant moments that really shaped your, your determination and, and drive in your life? I'll tell you a few things. First thing is uh, I was born and raised in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first thing was uh, uh, in Jerusalem is the best uh, place where they have the uh, highest level of uh, academy for music. I heard. So. I was challenged at age 17, 16, 17, mm -hmm. 16, 17, to play the most difficult uh, piano uh, pieces. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it was the concerto of Greek in La Minor, mm -hmm. and nobody believed I would be able to do that because it's mm -hmm. really very hard, and I'm just uh, being four. a pianist myself. Yes, so it's pian yes. very challenging. A challenge, yes. yes, it's challenging. You understand? Yes, yes. So for me, it was amazing, and mm -hmm. uh, I achieved this uh, wow. goal. Mm -hmm. So I was very happy. Secondly, you know, my brother is uh, extremely successful. One of the you know handmade uh, successful uh, businessmen in Israel. Mm -hmm. And the challenges that he's facing with me and him, we we, we raised together like we're almost twins because mm -hmm. one year between us. So the challenges we faced together and what we had to go through mm -hmm. that motivated me even more to be more successful. And, more and successful. you were pushing each other, I suppose. We push it other exactly, and mm -hmm. we are helping each other. Uh, also, you know, my parents uh, are extremely supporting, mm -hmm. extremely supporting. You know, it's so important when you know you have a backup. You know, definitely. Have, yeah, that's a beautiful story to begin with, and to have that base, I can imagine. Now, going and diving straight into the 
oil and, and gas sector. Um, I wanted to ask you, you have ownership and partnership in two massive oil companies, one of them being Global Oil and Gas LTD. How do you approach managing all these extensive ventures? I mean, it's not easy, let's say. <laughs> and yeah. what strategies have really contributed to that impressive track record that you have in that sector? Okay, first of all, you must understand that for me, being able to manage these kind of companies is to be able to, f to have the right partner on the other side and to, to know how to trust and how to sometimes to release mm -hmm. your want. You, everybody wants to have a full control. You know, if you do like that, nothing comes inside. If you open a little bit, it comes, something can come. So I, I learned to release and to give my partner, which I really trust, to handle the business there. I do everything I need to do all over the world. I bring the business, I bring the money, but he's the one who's doing the day, day by day uh, work there. And you work well and, together. Yeah. And, uh, and one thing I want to tell you, to become an owner of oil field, is not easy at all it's very challenging and uh, we had to face a lot of uh, obstacles in the middle because nobody wanted to have an Israeli woman um, buying like uh, an oil field and yeah. owning uh, so I had to learn on the hard way how to become the owner of the this uh, very uh, interesting and uh, very rewarding mm -hmm. business that I do now as being the owner of oil fields. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the key lessons, let's say, that you learned in the last 10 um, years? Being such a challenging yeah. sector, I'm sure you have. One thing I'll tell you, I never get a no as an answer. <laughs> never. I always try to find, you know, we, are, we have to be creative and we have to think outside of the box. Yeah. You cannot go like that. Since I learned and as as uh, raised as uh, in, in where I was raised is you have to learn how to do things uh, outside the box mm -hmm. once you think outside the box you know like being an entrepreneur you cannot uh, only work by the rules you have to to think something to be very creative mm -hmm. and being creative is understood how I can really go and acquire this uh, business that I want to have and I had to learn how to talk to the different because it's different cultures, mm -hmm. it's different, totally different uh, business. Definitely. From, I, I started my career as a banker. Mm -hmm. So imagine like a bank is bank. Yeah. And what I do now is uh, totally different. In the university, uh, one of my degrees, uh, my second degree was studying how to become an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And then I told my professor, listen, it's very strange for me that you are teaching people how to become an entrepreneur because you can only give skills to somebody that was born as an entrepreneur mm -hmm. okay there's no you formula cannot, for it yeah it's not something you acquired like you have to be you have to have the skills you have to have it's in your genes yeah to become an entrepreneur and then you go to the university you get skills you get you get uh, like weapon mm -hmm. how to deal with uh, how to leverage what you have already gained as a, as an entrepreneur so yes yeah, so I learned a lot how to acquire the whole field how to maintain all kind of business all kind of uh, different uh, people mm -hmm. uh, how to talk to them be adaptable right and yeah, exactly and that, that, that's very important how to adopt uh, and also not to be afraid to to get a no and sometimes a lot of lot of time a lot, lot of uh, uh, time in my life I had to leave the ego far away from me you know so which is not easy to, yeah that's a big lesson yes let your ego so, read some Freud exactly <laughs> you know you, there's a, a very nice sense as you say don't be uh, right be smart mm -hmm. okay so sometimes you don't have to be you have to be just smart listen know how to listen know how to which is a trait I suppose us females possess that's our that's, <laughs> that's our, our secret. skill. <laughs> that's yes. our benefit to being a woman. Now, I suppose since you did say you're a global traveler, um, I suppose you met quite a lot of influential people in the in the Middle East, and your true ability to really extend those networks has made you a very famous broker for fellow millionaire entrepreneurs, right? Um, can you just maybe share some tips on building those meaningful business connections and? the role that these connections really plays in, in your success. Yeah, um, 
first of all, people must trust you. You have to build trust. You have to be transparent. You have to be smart. And in my phone, my phone has over three trillion, three trillion dollar uh, connections. If I was, if I, if I, if I think about how much, what worth, is that? Oh my God, it's three trillion. <laughs> oh my because God. my networking is very impressive because um, I know I have no boundaries. I can talk to anybody. I can talk to this guy, to this guy, to this guy, and people learn how to trust me. Um, I think because I'm transparent. And because I believe that you have to release and you have to be transparent, like I'm talking, I'm very open when I talk to somebody. I completely I agree with yeah. you, yes. I, I don't play poker, or I'm not a poker face. I'm very open. So people learn to trust me. Mm -hmm. And trust is one of the Key. most important things to have this kind of uh, networking that I have. Now, alongside all of these business accomplishments uh, that you have, you ventured into many diverse industries, right? From, from electric cars to co-owning Runway Magazine TV to law. Um, have these experiences that you've had really enriched your entrepreneurial journey and how do you align it with that vision that you have for, for your personal future? I believe, you know, most of the time people think that they have to concentrate in one field. I believe to have diversified uh, business, uh, you know, we say sometimes it, they call it ADD or something, mm -hmm. but when you are diversified, then you have lots of opportunity to learn more and more from different sectors. For example, the AI cars, mm -hmm. is, I think it's going to be, I always look for the fields where I believe the benefit uh, I must say, you know, money is very important. So the benefit in that, uh, in, in being in that sector and being the first one to understand that the world is going somewhere mm -hmm. else, not staying in the same, you cannot, you, you, have this, you said you were yourself to adapt the, the progress in the world, you know, change, the world is changing. So to be diversified and have business here and learn from this and from this and from this, you learn. Yeah. It's very good to have knowledge is strength. Have no knowing a lot of stuff is you become much stronger mm -hmm. and you have to be open minded. So that's what I do. That's why I go, I do that, I do that. And this is why I studied in the university so many yes. studies, uh, you know, from pianist to mathematics to <laughs> economy to whatever. Very diversified ranges, so, of very, course. And to a lot of degree, yeah, so it's very diversified. I mean, it's stuff. important to be curious. And I think so. I think it's not people, you know, sometimes I have um, this agreement, let's say this, okay. uh, with people that think you have to concentrate in one field. Yes, I am concentrating in my oil and gas business, but it doesn't mean that I cannot be diversified and listen and learn from this and from mm -hmm. this. I can take from everything. I know how to take what is good for me. Mm -hmm. And that, That's a good that skill leverage the business, that leverage the mind, everything. Now, you did speak about open-mindedness, and I just, I'm curious to ask you, as a business leader that's operating on a global scale, how do you view the importance of diversity, of inclusivity, let's say, um, in the corporate world? And what initiatives have you maybe uh, undertaken to really promote these values in your own businesses now? What I do is um, I learned how to listen and I learned how to study. I, I do study. I do learn a lot at home. I read everything about the new businesses that are in the world. I read about where the world is going on. What are we going now with all these, for example, the new generation, AI, uh, and the, you know, having this totally new, for me, totally new uh, era of uh, life. A different dimension, so, yes, completely. Exactly, so what I take, I take from everything what is suitable for me. I learn a lot, I listen a lot. I let myself make mistakes. If you don't make mistake, you know, much mistakes as you make, the stronger you become yeah. and the most successful uh, person. And that's when business, growth happens, business, yes. Yeah. As long as we learn from those from yeah. those lessons. Yeah, like and you don't know. let them degrade us at the end of the day. Yeah. And get back up and, and do it again. Like even a baby, if it doesn't fail, how does it know that not to do that? Yeah. You know, you have to do something. Yeah, for know. sure. <laughs> so you have to be 
you have to be courage. You have to have courage. Definitely, and I mean your resilience and your determination is definitely one of your main skills. Yeah. Particularly in your businesses. So maybe can you share an instance with us when you faced a very big difficulty, um, whether it's in your personal life, whether it's in your business, and how did you really navigate through that, um, and how you know did you make the best out of it? Oh yeah. Um, first of all, I have faced a lot of no. You know, from what we say, from every no I got, if a no was a stone, mm -hmm. I could build a palace now from the no I got in my life. A stone castle. <laughs> and that, that. So, yes, definitely, nobody really, beside my parents and my mm -hmm. family, nobody believed that I will be able to do what I do now. Everybody told me, why do you think they need you? for the oil industry why do you think they need you to supply oil what do you think you will become a uh, owner of oil field exploration is very difficult it's very strong everybody say everybody told me it's not for you you won't be able to do it go you're a lawyer you're you came from the banking industry become a banker work have your salary every month i said no it's no. boring for me it's, yeah <laughs> i want to go here i want to be here yes. i don't want to be here and I am very competi competitive uh, person as a person. I can I have imagine. Challenge, uh, yeah. With yourself probably as well and with others. <laughs> so exactly. From, and also even when I do my sport lesson, every morning I run. Yeah. I run 10 kilometers every morning. Now, I won't run, uh, I won't run slower than a guy that is running near me even mm -hmm. though he doesn't know me. But if he runs 10, I run 10 and a half. If he runs 11, <laughs> I can 11 and a half. I will kill myself, but I will be more than him, you I know. See. Like That's challenging. And um, yes, definitely I had a um, lot of difficulty. It took me 10 years to be able to own my own oil field. Mm -hmm. 10 years of saying no and lots of uh, frustration in the middle. In the middle of a male-dominated field. And, and because of COVID, people didn't want to work. And 10 years, 10 years of really very challenging, but I never gave up, I never gave up. I was determined, I, am, I have full belief that I will succeed in what I really mm -hmm. want to achieve. Mm -hmm. Everything I want to achieve, Touch one, touch not. Yes. <laughs> Everything I want to achieve, I, I get it. Yes. I am. Um, I don't. I'm very determined, and if I believe that I can achieve something, I will achieve it. Right. I am. this literally leads me to my last question for you. What is your life motto, if you can put it in a few sentences? Determination is the first thing. Mm -hmm. uh, believing in yourself is the second thing. Be brave. Mm -hmm. Third, don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. Learn from the mistakes you do. Always remember when you fell, you get up. Yes. You don't stay down. You go from, from falling, going up and up and up. Mistakes is something you learn from. And so we can fix everything while we're alive. Exactly. Thank you so much for coming over today. I, it was a beautiful conversation. Learned a lot from you. And I really hope to see you again in the future. Best of luck Thank to you. you. Thank you very much for having me. It was a nice journey for me. Thanks a lot. And that's a wrap on the conversation with the most powerful Israeli businesswoman in the UAE. And it becomes evident that Aya's story goes beyond personal achievements. Her ability to break barriers in traditionally male-dominated sectors and build that global empire is a testament to her unwavering drive and acumen as a business leader. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to like and comment your thoughts. With you was multimedia producer Mina Wojcic. Until next time.